you know, so, 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 but if it gets better in the next like two years, are you going to tell the truth or are you going to try to just continue to cuck for the Democratic side? Um, I will absolutely tell the truth, uh, 100%, but I don't foresee getting better at all. I hope so. Yeah. I hope that it gets better. I believe so. I want to believe so. I just know. I just know what happened last time Donald Trump was, uh, last time Donald Trump was president, did not get better. But there's no wars. That was dope. What do you mean there was no wars? We were still in Iraq. We were still in Afghanistan. He blew up Syria and he killed Iranian general Qasem Soleimani. He threw away the Iran denuclearization agreement. Like he did a whole bunch of nonsense. He accelerated Obama's drone wars by like 400% when he was in office. He did all this stuff. It's just, he says he's anti-war and then people are like, oh, I guess he's anti-war. Now that Trump won, we're really going to see just how committed he is to no new wars. This of course was a big right-wing talking point during the campaign and people convinced themselves that Trump was some sort of peacenik who centered diplomacy, but you and I I know that is clearly not the case. This is somebody who is, by his nature, a warmonger. There's also a fundamental misunderstanding of what the US involvement in war looks like. People think just because there aren't boots on the ground in some sort of massive deployment in another country that we're not at war. And that is not the case. The US has shifted largely to unmanned aerial combat and limited engagements around the world, allowing us to perpetuate a culture of forever war. Trump did it. Biden did it, Obama did it, they're all doing it. It is a systemic problem. Trump is by no means an outlier here. And in fact, he celebrated political killings, including Soleimani, like Hassan mentioned, and also al-Baghdadi. Last night was a great night for the United States and for the world. A brutal killer, one who has caused so much hardship and death, has violently been eliminated. He will never again harm another innocent man, woman, or child. He died like a dog. He died like a coward. The world is now a much safer place. And now that Trump is heading back to the White House, we'll really see just how committed he is to the no new wars ideology. But by appointing Marco Rubio to Secretary of State and whoever he picks for Department of Defense, I'm not holding my breath, especially when the right has been clamoring for war with Iran for years. And this is ultimately just a lie. People believed it. Bradley Martin, the guy Hassan is talking to, believes it. Many people believe it. People see Trump as some sort of unique president in the grand scheme of things, simply because he told them he didn't start any new wars. He's obviously lying. The Republicans love to lie, and so do the Democrats, but there's an important distinction to be made here. Democrats don't necessarily lie about things that would appeal to their progressive base. But they kind of ran on that right now. I know. It's called lying, Bradley. Politicians yeah. do it all the time and trump does a very good job at lying the democrats are too f stupid to lie sometimes i'm like well, no lie. they lie all the time they lie all the time no what do you mean no no they lie for dumb sh they should lie for good sh okay they should lie and be like i want to give you health care they don't even f lie about that think about how f stupid that is republicans can say whatever the f they want and, and be like i love i love doing peace i love doing peace i am the no war candidate and then they come into power and they do war and then people are like, but he said he's the no war candidate, so I believe him. Okay. Yeah, Democrats what, 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 are too yeah. stupid. They don't even want to say they're the no war candidate. They don't even want to say that. They, they're they like, no, we love war, actually. That's what they're running on, which is so dumb because oh. most Americans are like, well, okay, I don't like war. And throughout the campaign, Trump often lied about Project 2025. He said he had no knowledge of it, no involvement with it. But now that he's won, he's appointing people who helped develop and draft it to prominent White House positions like Tom Homan, one of the authors of Project 2025. But why, but then why do they lie about so much dumb about like random Trump said they just lie, they make up, they just make up. Everything like is what? someone else's fault. Like what? Like all the Project 2025 that he's disavowed multiple times. They oh keep talking God, about it. Bradley, that's the Heritage Foundation. Donald Trump is absolutely Bro. gonna implement Project 2025. One hundo P. He already did it. You already have like plans, proposals ready to go if you get elected. Oh, that, uh, you, you start it's the done. deportation process. You you start yeah. uh, sealing off the border and and doing right. you know executive orders, whatever it takes, right. whatever's within it's your power. Done. It's already done, doing, ready to go. You've seen Tom. You've seen Tom Homan. He's coming on board. They're all coming. The whole group is coming on board. You even had right-wing influencers the day after the election gleefully celebrate saying, oh, it's my pleasure to inform you that Project 2025 was the plan 
all along. And of course it was. We know it was because what was in Project 2025 aligns perfectly with long-term Republican priorities, gutting the regulatory state, limiting people's reproductive rights, overhauling the federal government. It's no secret Republicans want to do that and have wanted to do that for years. Project 2025 was something that a lot of people paid attention to. They were like, oh my God, I can't believe that's happening. That's really devastating. And I told everybody at the time, I was like, that's Project 2024. That's Project 2026. That's Project 2023. That has been implemented and it was implemented under the Trump administration and it was implemented far before the Trump administration as well. It's just a continuation of the Republican strategy to, to increase the level of influence that they have uh, over the federal regulatory agencies. This has been a longstanding project, just like overturning Roe v. Wade was. That was set in motion 45 years ago when the Federalist Society was created. Like, that's not new. These guys have been at this for years and years. They're ideologically committed to doing like this. So, you know, sometimes it'll be 10 years when they can get it done. Sometimes it'll take 30 years. Sometimes in the case of abortion, it took 45 years, if I'm not mistaken. Putting it all on paper is nothing new either. The Heritage Foundation, which is one of the largest and most influential right wing networks in the country, put out policy books for years. The only thing that's unique here is that policy actually became a major topic of discussion in a presidential race. It wasn't just vibes. For a while, people were substantively talking about the contents of Project 2025. That is new. And of course, that was a transparent lie to you and me. But when people like Bradley Martin, who is a mega influencer across multiple platforms with millions and millions of followers, when they believe it and parrot it to their audiences, that results in the problem we saw play out in 2024, where uninformed influencers lean into right wing framing and narratives and mislead their audiences. There's a whole conversation now about how the manosphere, like you're seeing there, shaped the political election. And it's not something that people should dismiss or ignore. These these people have built up massive followings on typically apolitical content that Trump and his allies leaned into for political success. And it really underscores the importance of channels like this one, Rebel HQ, that do our best every single day to bring you true and accurate information. So at the very least, if you can like this video and subscribe to the channel, you can do a small part in helping negate the influence of the Manosphere in the next election.